Oh, hey, look at that. Hey guys, we are live. This is Jennifer Seymour from The Shooter's Mindset, and we are live this week with episode 335. I've got my co-host here, Greg Cannon. How's it going, Greg? Hey, everyone. And our guest of the hour this week, we have none other than Jason Spradling, the shooting sports promotions manager and field training manager at Federal Premium. How What's you up, doing? Good. How are y'all? Doing well. That's a mouthful for your title. No doubt. <laughs> it's a lot of words for this late at night. <laughs> so, for anybody that's unfamiliar with you, um, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got into shooting, and how you ended up working for Federal. Yeah. Um, so I live in uh, live in North Carolina. Uh, got a wonderful wife, two great kids. Um, how I got into shooting, it all started growing up, uh, mainly uh, duck hunting with my dad and my grandfather's stuff like that. Um, shot a little bit of like little 22s and stuff as a kid, but not really didn't do anything competitive. Um, and then I started in the firearms industry back in 2002 at Remington. Uh, I was there for eight years um, and got a little more into it here and there. Um, and then I guess with, with more of the competitive stuff, um, you know, we federal is part of Vista Outdoor um, and we used to own Savage. And at the time I was running our training team and we did an event called the Savage Trigger Tour where we did uh, 25 events across the country and let everybody try out all the new products and all this sort of stuff. And some of the ranges that we went to had thousand yard uh, targets. And so we were getting the rifles dialed in for thousand yards and, uh, and I had a lot of fun doing that. So that, that kind of gave me the long range bug. Um, so started doing that about three years ago, uh, started shooting some competitive pistol stuff since then and put dipping my feet into three gun this year. So it's uh, it's a lot of fun. It's addicting, isn't it? It is. It most certainly <laughs> is. You take somebody to the range and they get to shoot, and they're like, "Man, I love this shooting. It's fun." But you take somebody to competitive shooting. Yep. Take them to a match and let them get a little taste of that competitive edge. Yep. And I think everybody I've ever introduced to competitive shooting is like hooked, just like that. Like they're like, "This is fun." Yeah, no doubt. I, I, I shot sporting clays a little bit competitively and I was always mediocre, but you know, it was fun. Um, so a few years ago, I had the opportunity, I, I bought at an auction, um, the five day uh, precision rifle class at rifles only down in Texas with Jake and those guys. Oh, yeah. Fantastic class. And uh, on the fifth day, you had to shoot all the drills that you had done during the week as a competition. And I absolutely just wiped the floor with them. I mean, I, I beat them like a drum. I was like, man, I'm really, really good at this. And then uh, let's see, that would have been in February. I guess it was in May. I went and shot my first PRS match ever. It was the first time I'd ever met Buck Holly. And I went and shot one of Jim C's matches out in Iowa with him. And I came in dead last. And I was like, man, I am terrible at this. Why did I decide to go out and do this? This was a horrible idea. But, but I had that, that bug. I mean, it just it hit so hard. I was like, man, I, I want to do more of this. This is awesome. So it's been, it's been a lot of fun. It's so funny how you, like, you go to a local match and you're like, I'm not bad at this. I'm pretty good. And then you go to a national match and you're like, I just got spanked. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it, was, uh, it was an eye-opening experience for sure. Uh, but, but I tell everybody all the time that that first match, I was super duper nervous because I'm thinking, man, we got all these – you know, extreme type A personality, you know, just macho men. I don't know how this is going to go. And it was the nicest group of people I'd ever been around. I, I tell people all the time, aside from church, PRS folks are the nicest folks you'll ever meet in your life. I think I definitely can vouch for that. That's definitely true. Yep. We have the best people in the sport and everybody is so helpful. Mm hmm so that's my big plug like whenever somebody new is like well, what do I need to buy to get into a match and I'm like just come to the match yep. come with what you have if you just have a stock gun you know that you just just bring it like you don't have rear bags bring it I mean you need a bipod on your gun but gun with a bipod and some ammo with you know decent data on it and uh, other than that just come and like everybody will loan you tripods bags everything else that you need so yeah, you're not gonna win anything just show up and have fun 
<laughs> yeah, I still don't win anything. It's all right. Although I did win last two weekends ago at the Alabama match, a uh, certificate for some better ammunition. So good, good, good. Thank y'all very much for sponsoring the shooting sports because that's kind of what keeps people going is, you know, we couldn't do this. I don't think anybody could do it if you got zero help. So having like little things like the prize table, having that on there is huge. So yeah, no, we're, we're y'all and thank you so much for supporting the shooting sports. Yeah, definitely glad to have it. Glad to do it. Uh, so how I got started with federal, uh, I just had my 10th anniversary with these guys, uh, last October. Um, so after my stint at Remington, I got an opportunity to come on with the sales team at federal, um, working, basically doing training and stuff in stores and helping with events and things like that. And then, uh, after the Vista rollover, um, they were talking about wanting to, to do a training team. So I put in a proposal and got, uh, got the training manager position. I uh, did that for about three years and then I uh, got ball and told that I was taking over the, the shooting sports promotions role. And uh, it's been, it's been really, really good. So I've been doing that for about three years. It's ball been... and told that's the coolest position ever. No, it, it really, it, all of us. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> um, and, and it was actually really cool. My, my predecessor in, in the position um, was, was a super great guy. He, he was very uh, well respected in the sport, but he was a, he was a diehard, like world-class trap shooter. And so trap skeet sporting clays were really the only place we were doing any kind of focus in terms of supporting the shooting sports. Um, so when I came on, we talked about that and decided that we want to, we want to branch out and do more support on the, on the center fire side. So I run all of our uh, match support um, sponsorships, the shooting teams, and the relationships with the different organizations for pistol rifle and three gun. That's awesome. And yeah. that, that's a huge uh, grasp of people. If you're going across all of those genres of competitive shooting, you really, there's a big field there. Yeah. It's, it's a lot keep straight, but it's uh, it's a good group to work with. That's awesome. Yeah. Greg, do you, well, I don't know what Greg is doing, but do you have lives? Cause you said you have lives. You're on mute. Can't hear you. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't want you to hear me opening my backpack. Yes, we have lots of lives. Um, basically, everybody is saying how awesome of a guy you are and how much we really appreciate everything that you do <laughs> for the shooting sports. I um, appreciate that. You all. really are an awesome guy and super <laughs> nice all the time and always have a big bear hug every time I see you. So Yeah, it's all good. I, I appreciate that. Whoever, that, whoever said that, I I owe you $20. <laughs> uh, you, you're going to be broke. It was a lot of people said that. Um, so Hunter's HD Gold said, what's up? Are we going to see you at uh, Low Caps this weekend? Absolutely. I'm here now. Um, I'm in Talladega, ready to start slinging some 45s tomorrow morning. All right. Uh, Keith Baker said, thanks for all you've done for the PRS community. It's greatly appreciated. Good deal, Mr. Keith. Thank you. Uh, Rook. Rogus and Mike Tag said, Jason is a great guy. Um, Chad Heckler said, hey, friends, and he's got a cigar for you. Oh, fantastic, my brother. Hey, Chad. Aaron Conclade said, what's up, Jason? Hey, Ron. Um, Aaron, I don't get a shout out, just Jason. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> I see how it is. I was your friend first, but okay, Jason gets it. Um, let's see. Kevin Rich said, hey, Jason, thanks for all you guys are doing and have done for the sport. Glad to do it. Jeff Colry said, really appreciate all you and Federal are doing for the PRS community. Won't be forgotten, thanks. Mm -hmm. Jim C said, hey, Jason, hope you're doing great. Yes, sir. Um, Kent Rush said, uh, at the Federal Gold Medal match last year, Jason gave us match booklet binders with our names on it, and it's still one of the best things I have. And they, and everything disappeared. And they gave them to everybody that signed up. These things are awesome. Yep. That's one I of those. Do, I do still use mine. I use mine all the time. Like, look, there's another Alabama matchbook, and we're not going to. Oh, my scores aren't. <laughs> that, okay. But yeah, these things are awesome. Definitely hooked us up. I've actually got two more cases of them being delivered tomorrow for our New Mexico match. Dang on. I'm going to have to fly to New Mexico. Come on, brother. <laughs> it's a long walk. Oh, uh, Hunter's HD Gold said the Hunter's HD Gold cigars are finally in. So make sure to stop by their booth this weekend. I will do it. 
Hey, Brian from HD Gold. I just went to the eye doctor and he gave me a prescription for shooting specific. I was so excited to go to the eye doctor and have a doctor that like, when I said like, I can't see my turret with my left eye because my bifocals, it's down here and not up there. And he is giving me a prescription where the right eye and left eye will be different so that I can look through the scope with this eye and look at the reticle with this one and see. And he understood reticles and turrets. And I was so super excited. I need to get that information from you. Also, I might hit you up, Brian, for some new shooting glasses because. Yeah. And also, so for those of you that don't know, Brian actually does a thing where he he has like, I think he has a list somewhere of gun friendly. Op what's the O word? Optometrists. Or optometrists. Um, Big so word. you. So this way, you know, you know, especially for the pistol guys, like that's real complicated to see this. And apparently there's some out there that are cool enough to be like, yeah, just, you know, discreetly bring it in in a bag and we'll get you set up with something. Um, so if you're having trouble finding somebody like that, you need help with, reach out to Brian. Um, hello, Prentice Wink. And Hi, let's see. Oh, Aaron, Aaron King Clay did say, what's up, girlfriend? Hey, Aaron. <laughs> hey and jim c i want to tell you that when i went to alabama match I had a lot of people come up to me and tell me they enjoy this year's mindset but i had a few people say i really enjoyed that one show with that one guy so yeah that the jim c show was definitely one of the most popular we people had they learned a lot so just mm -hmm. kudos for that thanks i think we need to uh maybe give it a couple more months have jim back again for another another go round of knowledge bombs mm -hmm. yeah jim's an awesome dude for sure mm -hmm. That's one that I went back and watched with a pen and paper later. And last slide for right now is Christine Allen said, love me some Jason. Thank you for all, thanks for all your support at the Alabama match. Thanks, Miss Christine, love you. Awesome. So one big thing that came up regarding federal, and I wanna say it was during the Alabama match or right before, <clears throat> cause I was there and people were saying, did you see the email? So Midway USA sent some emails out saying that they were discon that there were the CCI and federal primers were discontinued. And I said, I know a lot of people took that on the internet that were like, oh my gosh, federal is not making primers or CCI is not making primers. So we know that's not true. Do you know what's going on? What generated those emails? What can you tell us about that? So uh, I had a conversation with our sales rep that calls on them. Um, and this is not 100% confirmed. So don't take this as gospel uh official answer our our assumption is that they discontinued in their system the 5000 count cases and only did 1000 count in an effort to serve more customers so that that's our assumption we're waiting to get that uh get that verified but that that makes the most sense we certainly have not discontinued making primers like yeah like who sent those emails? Who, 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 like, you, you have one job. So, like, maybe do not alarm the entire firearms community and get everyone set off. Maybe don't send emails that say that. I mean, so I think they were auto generated. And my brother sat in my chair in my office over the weekend. So I'm really confused at how this works right now. But um, anyway, everybody that got those emails, I'm assuming had them on their, their notify me list. Yeah, so they just they just went out automatically and nobody probably really thought about it um so yeah during the uh alabama match you know people are like oh my gosh is federal discontinuing primers i'm like i i i bought two thousand this morning because <laughs> this really thing at the at the alabama match was watching everyone rush in to buy federal primers <laughs> that's a good thing so y'all, I really, I mean, kudos to Federal for doing that. Legit, like the, the the competitive shooting sports would die if we can't get ammo. And I know that sounds dramatic, but you know, if people can't get components to be able to make the ammo that we use for competing, competitive shooters go through much more ammo than the average Joe. Yep. Um, if they, if the, you know. If they came to our house and looked at what ammo and components we have, they would probably classify us all as serial killers. But because they, you know, look at that and they're like, oh my gosh, that person was found with 
you know, a thousand rounds of whatever. And I'm like, well, yeah. Wow. That was one fun day at the range. So, you know, competitive shooters really do need to be able to get it. And so the fact that y'all are kind of honed into that and putting some primers and components at matches where people can have a fair shake to get them. I know I appreciate it. I don't have time to go through the internet looking for what's available when um, Greg will send me links and be like, there's primers here and I'm at work and busy because I work at a hospital and by the time I get to look at it, it's all sold out. So yeah, I, I legit have a hard time getting things to be able to shoot. So I appreciate that y'all do that. And I think all the shooters really appreciated it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, you know, we're certainly glad to do it. We have we have valued the shooting sports for a long time. It, it's a great market. It's a great, great community. And, and we are so appreciative of all the support that we get from everybody. Um, and so through the, through the insanity that's been going on for the past 12 months, um, you know, we started talking about, you know, what's, what's the best way to approach this? So in normal times, our, our components that we have available for sale come as an overflow of what's needed for ammo production. Um, so if we just theoretically throwing some numbers out there, if we make a million primers and we only need 750,000 of them to load ammo, then the other 250,000 go as component sales. Well, right now there is no extra, you know, we, we are severely back ordered across the board, all different categories, but we have, leadership in place who are either competitive shooters or hunters and they're familiar with the industry they love the industry they love our customers and they understand that without components without ammunition you know the the, the shooting sports suffer um and, and the conversation that i've had internally um is that you know the the type of folks that tend to get really really involved heavily in the shooting sports are the type of people who jump in with both feet and go hundred miles an hour as hard as they can go all the time. Mm -hmm. And if it gets to the point where they can't compete because they can't find bullets, they can't find primers, they can't find powder, they can't find ammo, then how long does it take them to sell their, you know, $20,000 worth of equipment and go buy a bass boat? And when do we see them again? Right. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we take it very seriously and we're doing, we're doing what we can to help. It's just, when I say things are stupid right now, it just, that doesn't even to cover it. <laughs> yeah. I, I could, you know, just, I work in manufacturing yep. in a very different industry. Um, although we do sell stuff at Bass Pro. So, you know, we're, we're kind of along the same lines there, mm -hmm. but um, getting stuff from suppliers is harder than it's ever been getting people to come to work is harder than it's ever been yep um having all of the same parts there to build something at the same time is harder than it's ever been and then you know in your particular industry you know throw in the absolutely ungodly ridiculous demand and you know the, you can only do so much yeah it's um it, it's insane and you know we have we have all kinds of helpful theories that people throw at us and all this sort of stuff. And I mean, the, the situation right now is it was an absolute perfect storm, you know, and, and guys, if, if you are, and I'm not talking to you two directly, obviously, cause you know this, but um, for, for newer competitive shooters, don't get caught in an election year without ammo on hand, right? This happens every four years. So in 2024, be ready, right? Uh, this, this past year was kind of a perfect storm between uh, the pandemic and the political unrest and the election year and the riots and 10 million new gun owners. And I mean, it's just, it's on and on and on. Um, and, and the simple fact is that public demand is outstripping production capacity of the industry. And that's, that's where we're at. Yeah, I mean, I I found a link for a, a another Vista brand posted some stuff up on their website this morning, and you know it was it was CCI posted some standard velocity for sale, yep. and of course you know first thing I did was buy some myself, and then I thought of my friends, and since it's all <laughs> of them, and 
I literally sent it to six people, all of which bought their limit. Yep. Um, because it's just something we've all been looking for for months and finally found it. Yep. No doubt. And it, you know, man, it's, it's one of those, it's one of those deals. I, I was trying to explain this to my son the other day. It, it's um, it's a vicious cycle. And I, I think it's very similar to what we saw with the 22 shortage several years ago. Um, people are buying everything they can get their hands on because they're scared they can't get it. And the reason they can't get it is because everybody's buying everything they can get their hands on. Um, and, and so what it took with that was for it, it took, I guess, for folks to get to a saturation point enough where they felt comfortable for just a couple of weeks. And then you go in the store and there's stuff on the shelf and everybody goes, Oh, well, it's over. And it was done. Um, but it, I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. We all so, want to have the ad. Somebody did a satire ad where it showed that they were shut down all their presses and were making t-shirts. No, that was, that, that was, that was Hornady. I think. Oh, it was hilarious though, because you know, that's been the big thing is the manufacturers are in with the government. They're in bed with the government, not making, they're creating the short, you know, yeah. it was all that. It was hilarious though. They were like, it was a satire thing where, yeah, we're not making primers. We're making t-shirts. Right. <laughs> yeah. And that kind of ties into another question we, we had on the list is that y'all's y'all's president put out a couple of videos during all this time, you know, and the, the first one, you could tell that like it, it, it kind of got to him all the, the BS that people were spewing. He's like, I'm tired of hearing this. He's like, look, here's a machine making bullets really fast. We're hiring as many people as we can. We yep. can't just drag somebody off the street and say, load this ammo. We got to train them first. Yep. But um, that was really cool that you guys were, you know, so transparent of like, look, dudes, like what, what else you, you want to come run this? Right. So that, that was Jason Vanderbrink. He's the, the president of our ammunition divin, uh, division. And Vanderbrink and I actually worked together at Remington back in those days. Um, and then he hired me at ATK, which became Vista uh, when, I, when I came on with Federal, like I said, 10 years ago. And so we, we've worked together uh, pretty closely for a lot of years. And that dude, is he is as smart a guy as you'll ever meet in your entire life. He understands the industry. He knows exactly what's going on. You have a conversation with him. He's 10 steps ahead of you all the way. Um, and, and he's one of those guys, he, he's not going to pull punches and he's not going to back off. He's going to tell you exactly how it is. And everything he said in that video was the God's honest, dead level truth. Um, I mean, those, those plants are running 24 seven all the time, pumping out ammo left and right. So it's, um, it's good to have, good to have folks like that at the helm. Yeah. He seemed like he, you know, there was nothing that really flustered him. You know, he, he seemed to have know exactly what was going on exactly. You know, I think he said, people say just build more factories, but by the time we build a factory, this is going to be over. Yeah. And, and that's, I think that's what a lot of folks don't understand. You know, we, we get the helpful, the helpful uh, suggestion sometime of why don't you build more ammo? And it's like, well, Oh, why, why didn't we think of that? You know, <laughs> well, uh, you know, you could get you, there's only about a eight week backlog on a Dylan 1050. Right. <laughs> so you can, you can get about three 1050s over there in the corner. Right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but it, I mean, it, the point is absolutely valid. You know, we, right now it would be nice to have double the capacity of what we have, but if we flip that switch today and say, okay, we're, we're going to add another production line, you can't go get this equipment at home Depot, right? This is, I mean, you're talking minimum, 18 months to get equipment ordered, installed, um, make the necessary infrastructure changes. Then you got to train people. So you're talking 18 to 24 months before you can go live with it. So from a business standpoint, we have to be able to say, what does this market look like in 24 months? Well, right now, nobody knows what it looks like in 24 days. So 24 minutes. Right. Yeah. So it, it's just, it's a non-starter. Yeah. I, I understand that, but if you guys do change your mind, I have a Dylan 650 over here. I don't use much. <laughs> Put you to work, buddy. <laughs> there we go. Con that, there you go. Contract work. Right. Just just send me some bullets, cases, primers, and powder, <laughs> and I'll one for you, one for me. One right. See. I have a little cardboard sign that says "We'll work for primers." <laughs> That's funny. So thank thanks to Jason, I, I'm good on primers for the year now. 
I do. I am much just, better than I was. This it's just literally everything else. I will say on the Saturday morning, we could buy powder that morning. And I got up and got down to the range at like, was it 5.45 we got there? It was 5.30 that we were there. We were there at 5.30 and we sat in the car until we saw headlights. And as soon as I saw headlights come around, I got out in the pouring down rain and ran to the front steps to get in line. So I'd be first so I could buy some powder because I really needed some H4350. And it was like, almost like Black Friday, getting up at the crack of dawn and sitting there to be able to buy stuff. But I walked away with some primers and some 4350, and now I can make some ammo. Well, let, let's talk a little bit about the way that all went down. I, I can't take much credit for any of that. Um, all, all of that plan was all Jim Saunders at Alabama Precision. Uh, he is so passionate about taking care of his shooters. Um, and, and so he and I started talking back in probably December about trying to get some stuff worked loose and we were able to able to get it done, but that was, that was all his plan. I, I just tried to pull some strings for him. That's awesome though. I, I mean, I think it's all a, you know, group effort between the yeah. manufacturers helping and the match directors trying to coordinate having it there. Yeah. So I think it all comes together and it's just, it's great. I love the shooting sports for that very reason if nothing else. So. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. You got some lives, Greg? Yeah, let's catch up on a few lives. Uh, Chad Gla Glasscock said, Jason, thank you for everything you do for this sport. Thank you, um, Rudy wants to know if Federal's considering adding 6.5 PRC under its gold medal match line. Um, we are currently loading 6.5 PRC in some of our hunting calibers. Um so I don't know that it would be too far of a stretch for us to add that to the gold medal line. Um, when we have to look at overall market demand uh, and, and things of that nature and make the good business case when it comes to adding a part number. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we can, we can definitely take that suggestion and run it up the flagpole and see where we get. So I, I know it's, uh, it's come on really strong here in the past couple of years. Yeah, I definitely know how that is about trying to – see, I'm on the other side. I'm sitting there fighting everybody saying, no, no more part numbers. No, they, 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 they don't need another shade of blue. Um, but Rudy said he'd buy at least the case if you made it. So you can okay, go ahead cool. and add that into your, into your business case. Rudy will buy it. Sorry, I just signed you up, buddy. Uh, Mike Schlack said, hello, Jason. Such an awesome man. Um, Aaron Sessler said, if this is a recurring cycle, isn't this eventually going to benefit everyone? Um, now read, read that one to me one more time. If this is a recurring cycle, isn't this eventually going to benefit everyone? Um, it, if, if he's talking about the, the rise and fall of ammo demand mm -hmm. with political pressure and stuff like that, yeah, I mean, I, I guess every four years, it's it's great to see uh, see some demand spike up, but it's the it's the times in between that we have to we have to watch out for. So I, I guess in theory it would because every four years, federal gets to clean their shelves off. Um, they get people in there to go and dust when they're all empty. You know, maybe put a coat of paint on the wall behind where they had piles of inventory sitting around, and then on the other end of the spectrum then we have an abundant supply of ammunition that we can buy affordably. So in theory, yes, there's, there's good times for, for everybody. And, you know, I'm sure federal's made a little bit of money. They've, they've sold a couple rounds of ammunition recently. Here and there. Yeah. One or two. Um, John Wade said, at least it was better, a better crowd than on black Friday in the pouring down rain under that <laughs> tiny little tent. That, that was a good crowd. It was nice. We had fun. We chatted. Someone came up and tried to go in and I tried to kill them. No, really. <laughs> I didn't try and kill them, but someone else was like, what are you doing? And the guy's like, well, I'm going inside. And he's like, it's not open yet. <laughs> <laughs> I was jockeying for a position. I was going to fight out. It was going to be like, you know, hair weaves were going to fly. I was going to be gotta do what you gotta do. 50. <laughs> I say she was uh she was in the passenger seat of my truck. I drove there. I'm the one that said there's a car, and she still ran to beat me to the door. 
<laughs> yeah, I saw headlights and I was like, nope, I got up early. I'm going to be first one in line. So I like, as soon as the headlights turned, I like jumped out of the truck and started like running over there. And then when the guy came up, he's like, I totally saw y'all jump out of the truck when you saw me pull up. I was like, yeah, I'm not stupid. No one else was there. I wasn't going to get out and stand in line with no one there. But as soon as you were, I was going to get in line first. <laughs> You're the lady at Walmart fighting over the $50 TV. I mean, <laughs> no, because TVs, you can go somewhere else and get another one. But powders and primers, yeah. yeah I'm, that. I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say I'm I'm sure if for for five dollars more she could have got the same powder somewhere else she would have ordered it online and had it waiting for at the house. Something like that. So you're at Talladega right now. I know whenever we asked you about doing the show, yeah. you're like, "Well, I'll be in a hotel for USPSA Nationals." But sure. Yes. Yeah. So what all are you doing there, and how's it going? Uh, so this is USPSA low cap nationals. Um, so for those of you that are not familiar with, uh, with pistol competition, uh, at low cap, it is revolver production, limited tin and single stack. Uh, so all of us guys that shoot the lower capacity magazines and so forth and so on, this is the, this is like the national championship for that. So, um, the staff starts shooting tomorrow and Thursday, and then the main competitors, I think, start Thursday afternoon through Sunday. Uh, so I'm shooting with staff tomorrow so I can work the rest of the time and see if I can get out there and, and not embarrass myself. I'm sure you will. Just go have fun. We shall see. <laughs> see if I can stay away from Dairy Queen this time. That's the best <laughs> way to do it is to just have fun. Yeah, no doubt. You got any, uh, any, any goodies down there in, in Talladega? Uh, yeah, actually, we um, we were able to work a deal with USPSA, and so you know they're in the same boat that that a lot of the, the rifle competitors are in. You got guys you know not able to go to matches, not able to practice because they can't find ammo. Um, and in the pistol sports, uh, reloading is still still very common. Uh, it's not as it's not as pervasive as it is in the in the rifle world. So it, um, the, in other words, there's a lot more guys shooting competitive pistols that, that are running factory ammo. So we were able to get a deal together where uh, we were able to get some of our, uh, it's called Syntec Action Pistol. It's our, um, our performance competition load for handguns. Uh, get some of that allocated for this, uh, for this match and for the rest of the nationals. And so basically the competitors can pick it up at registration uh under the with the understanding that they are to use that ammo in the match um and and it's not for resale and all that sort of stuff so um i was talking with those guys today and i, I think they said we had about 90 competitors that had signed up uh, to take advantage of that so i mean that, that's awesome for us we got we got 90 folks here who would not have otherwise been able to um been able to participate so that's pretty awesome. That's really awesome. And that, so I came from USPSA and three gun. Um, yeah. I never got to a very high level at it just because I had so, and I think that's why I jumped in head first into, you know, the, the two day PRS series when I got into this Yeah. with, with pistol, I had three different local P local USPSA matches within 40 minutes of my house every month. Yep. Yeah. And I saw absolutely no reason to do anything more than that. Right. And then I kind of got addicted to this. And it's like, I could go and drive five and a half hours for my closest one day. Or I could drive five and a half hours for my closest two days. So, you know, it's cheaper to go and just go two days at once instead of paying for gas twice. And, you know, you're already going to need hotels and everything to drive five and a half hours for a one day. But um, I remember when that Syntec came out, it's like, wow, somebody finally listen to what we actually use in handgun ammunition and competition. That's a first. Yeah. And, and that, that kind of goes back to the leadership thing I was talking about earlier. Uh, so we have a guy, he's one of our, one of our engineers on the pistol side named Casey Reed, uh, who is a grandmaster uh, world champion shooter. Um, he and uh, a, a buddy of mine who was our pistol products manager at the time, uh, a guy named Justin Johnson came up with, with that product. Uh, with with the understanding that you know it was perfect for pistol shooters, so 
it, it has done really, really well. We, we've seen a huge spike over the past three years of folks uh, running factory ammo at these national level matches. And the vast majority of that's been federal syntax. That's been awesome. Because, you know, it's, it's pistol shooting is not like precision rifle shooting. That's a true story. You know, you like, I don't want to say you 100% have to shoot reloads because I've shot very, very accurate rifles shooting factory ammo. But like, I've never owned a rifle that would do it. Um, Jen's always shot factory ammo and every once in a while I'm like hey, let, me, let, me, let me get a couple of these let me see if I can shoot a group with this and it just it doesn't work and she gives me that face actually whenever I ask <laughs> about like let me get three bullets like I'm gonna fucking cut you I'm like sorry geez but um you know it just hasn't worked for me but I've never you know it's very rare that a pistol just like you know you're not really looking for groups with a pistol it's not like oh you know shooting the the alpha of this target from 20 feet away you know, I can't do it with this brand, but I can do it with that brand. It's right. all about the, the, you know, the recoil and hitting power factor and the affordability of it. Sure. And so that's why I started, um, you know, reloading for pistol ammo. And then you guys came out with that. And I'm like, I could have just bought that. That's like exactly <laughs> what I'm reloading. <laughs> yeah, it's been, uh, it's been really, really soft. So I'm, I'm running the 220 grain 45 Centec this weekend. So It'll be fun. Very. So your job description sounds really awesome. And actually, I found out you have two jobs at the beginning of this. <laughs> but shooting sports promotion manager, it literally sounds like Federal is giving you money to like to take care of us competitive shooters and keeping us little customers. And it seems like you're doing, uh, doing a great job at that because like if you look at the comments, literally everybody's like, oh, we love Jason. Well, and you're doing great. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jason has primers. Yes, yes. Jason sells us primers. We're very happy with that. He's like the drug dealer that has primers. Yeah, I, I seriously thought about showing up to Alabama with them in little little baggies. <laughs> <laughs> Go and buy them. I I actually had a coworker ask me if he could buy five primers for me. Oh, that's funny. That is funny. I'm like, did he want to kill, and he did. Did he not think he could? do it with one or two you need five well he he was buying a muzzle loader that used rifle primers instead of percussion caps i believe is the word for the things five primers is just a odd number that's like i need to go kill someone and i think i need five shots to do it <laughs> not like i need some primers so i can go to the range of practice well, this is the guy that, that misses deer at 70 yards, so it, it, it could have taken him five shots to hit the broad side of a barn. That's funny. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the job description, you know, the title and, all, and everything is, is pretty epic. Um, to my knowledge, I'm, I'm the only guy in the industry that does what I do, um, which, I mean, obviously is pretty cool, uh, but, I, but I think it's really indicative of how – how seriously Vista and Federal, uh, and, and I'll also do this for CCI uh, on the side. So um, um, it, it's, it's indicative of how seriously we take the competition shooting segment of the market and, and trying to take care, of, um, take care of those guys and make sure that we're, that we're present. And you know, it, it's very helpful for us to get to, uh, to get to participate in this stuff and see what you guys are looking for and, and how can we meet those needs. Uh, so it's a, it's a win all around. I think it definitely gives you an insight to what it, I mean, that just makes sense. So you can see what is the most desired products and you can bring that back and. Yeah. And, and we. It's great to be so involved. Yeah. It, we, we had a conversation early on about, about what this participation should look like. Um, and, and my point was, I, I think we get a lot more mileage, uh, a lot more impact out of being on the line with you guys shooting shoulder to shoulder, uh, than it would for me to set up at a tent somewhere handing out catalogs. Right. Um, so Jen, I, Jen, I don't think you and I have squatted together before, but, but if we had, we, we would have had the opportunity over two days to build a relationship, to build a rapport, to get to know one another. And. I think that's a lot more powerful than just showing up or throwing some stuff on a prize table. So I agree.
agree. When I go to a match and I shoot with a squad for two days yep. or two and a half days, and you know, by the end of it, I'm like, oh, I'm kind of, I'm kind of sad. I don't want to go home <laughs> because they're like all my buddies. Like at Alabama, that was like the best squad. We had so much fun. Yep. Mm -hmm. the potters over there, like hand catching everybody's brass. You never had to look for brass because at, at the end of every stage, Tom's like, your brass, Jen. And I'm like, you're so wonderful. It didn't even touch the ground. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Like we just really had a great squad. And it's funny when you squad with them for the couple of days, you really get to know people. So you being embedded in a squad and shooting with different people, I'm sure every match you go to, you're shooting with a different group of people. And so yep. it, it gets you to, you know, you're able to meet people and kind of see what their needs are. I just think it's great. Yeah. And it, it's a fine line to walk too, because like, like you said, it, it is important to be able to get out there and meet new people but then you also have your favorite people that you want to shoot with all the time. Um, like uh, 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 Buck Holly, really, really good friend of mine. You know, we've known each other for going on four years now and I shoot with him every chance I get. Love the dude to death. Uh, I think of people like Matt Partain, uh, Tucker Schmidt, Aaron Kincaid, you know, I just, there's so many people that I just absolutely love shooting with. And if I could have a squad with just those guys, it'd be awesome. But then I don't get to meet anybody else. And, and all that sort of stuff so it is a double-edged sword when i look at squatting i'm like well i really love these people but i do really try to um so my first year shooting prs i really really tried to squad with like regina milkovich ryan hay paul oh. reed those were some of the people that like at the very beginning of me getting into this really helped and i was so lost at that point that i still was like struggling to find my dope and had no idea when call. I'm like, which way do I hold? I mean, like I was clueless that first year. So I kind of like hung closer to them. And then my second year, I still love those people to death. My favorite people, Regina is probably one of my favorite people in PRS and always will be. Yep. Love you, Gina. Anyway. <laughs> um, but that second year, I really tried to not squad with her. And part of it was because I was so dependent on her and being like, Hey, yeah. What do I need to hold for wind? And so I didn't have to think, right? I didn't have to figure it out on my own. Right. And so, you know, I, I squatted with some different people like Tucker Schmidt and Aaron Kincaid. You said they're some of the best people to squad with. I've squatted with them a couple of times. You know, I squatted with Carson Brown and them this time. So I try and change it up and you really learn different things from different people. It's so valuable to go with different people instead of always sticking with the same people. So yeah. yeah. And then you get to meet new people. I mean, every time I'm like, oh man, those people are so cool. I love them, you know? And then I'm like, I have to go home and not see them. Like, yeah. that stinks, you know? But um, it's very fun to, to get with different people. So I get what you're saying because it's fun to shoot with your friends, but it's also fun to meet different people. And especially yeah. with what you're doing, then your reach is so much greater. Right. You know, mm -hmm. you're squatting with different people. Yep. So on your, the comment on your first, first year, Eric Lundberg saying, ah, Jen's first year, LRSE. <laughs> Don't even sit, look, Eric was the RO that helped me. I was on the struggle bus. That was like my first match. It's was, also, was also your most expensive match. Why do you say that? You spent like 30 grand when you got home to get a four wheel drive. Uh, well, I did get stuck in the mud <laughs> with my Mazda. And when I came home, I was like, I have to have something that won't get stuck in the mud. But that was such a struggle bus match. It was so bad, but Eric helped me a little bit on the clock. I know they're not supposed to, but like, dude, I wasn't gonna beat anybody, so it was okay. <laughs> I was like down there and I couldn't find the target. And he's like, a little bit more that way. <laughs> but yeah, it's funny to, to look at the evolution going through, that was a rough match, but yeah. It's a great sport. People are so willing to help. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, it really is. Like, I mean, this weekend I had a, uh, a trigger go out, um, hang firing on a mover stage, like literally the worst time ever for a hang fire. If the target's holding still, like, you know, okay, I'll just hold steady for a second. It's going to kind of screw with me, but trying to ambush something moving and you have a, a variable dwell time in between the time you pull the trigger and the gun goes bang. That's it is fun. not fun. So I got off of the stage and I was bitching to Jen. I was like, oh, I can't believe this. It's just so weird. 
and one of our squad mates, Oren, came up. He's like, what kind of trucker is it? Oh, I, I have one of those in my truck. Um, <laughs> You know, there's only one more stage but you want to shoot that or you want me to go grab it now and then like at the end of it i wanted to give it back to me he's like you sure you don't still need it like you could just mail it back to me once you get your trigger fix i'm like ah, i think i'll be all right but thanks you know it's just like there's so many freaking nice people there that are always for, help. for anybody that doesn't shoot prs and is sitting at home listening to this right now and they're like well i don't know what to take or i don't have the right equipment like get out of your head and just come with what you have. And I promise you, if it's that bad that like two stages in, you're not able to hit anything and it's because of the gun, there will be someone that'll be like, dude, I got an extra rifle in the car. You want to shoot it? I mean, I promise you, people think I'm crazy when I say that, but this legitimately happens. I've had two matches that I had a gun just go down and I had people like multiple people you can shoot my spare gun that's in my car, which I'm a little jealous of people that have a spare gun. But anyway, um, and I shot their gun and ended up able to have fun. So the people in this sport are so willing to help and get new people, new shooters into it. So if you're sitting at home and you're worried about it, just don't worry about reloading. Get some better ammunition. There you go. Easy to yeah. get. Get some ammunition, get a gun with a bipod to show up at a match. And I promise you, they will loan you whatever else you need. Absolutely. And if you do for real have questions before going to your first match, shoot me or Jen a message. We'll probably end up, you know, sitting down, having an hour long phone call one night. We'll, we'll walk you through everything you need to know and, you know, get, get you out there or we'll find somebody local to you. I know we've done that like live on the show before. Someone's like, I'm here and I don't know anybody close to me that shoots and I just asked it on the air and there was like three people that are like, Oh, message me, message me, message me. Yeah. I, I've told, I tell people that all the time, you know, if you want to come shoot a match, you don't know anybody, you don't know what to do or whatever, just holler at me. I'll be happy to squad with you and, and walk you through, you know, it, it's, it, it really is the most fun you can have with a firearm. It is. So there's two big PRS matches that Federal's putting on this year. So mm -hmm. tell us about those two matches, like where they are, when they are, and a little bit about them. Yeah. Uh, so the 22nd, 23rd of this month, we have the King of Coal Canyon, which is going to be at the NRA Whittington Center in Raton, New Mexico. Um, also going to be the site of the PRS finale this year. So if you think you might be coming to the finale, it'd be good to um, to get a good look at the facility and the range and all that sort of stuff. Uh, Derek loves me, the match director. He's got uh, evidently an, an outstanding course of fire set up, uh, mostly natural terrain stuff, uh, not, a, not, not any kind of gimmicky stages or anything. Um, so it's going to be an epic location. The weather's going to be beautiful. Um, it's going to be a really, really cool match. So we're, we're excited about that one. And if you guys have not seen that match logo, it is the coolest match logo in the history of match logos. Uh, our our in-house art department did that one and it turned out awesome. So um, there's actually still spots available. Uh, so if you guys are on the fence, come shoot with us. It's going to be it's going to be awesome. Uh, we got some really cool swag, and we're actually doing that. Uh, we came up with the idea of doing it as a primer neutral match. Uh, so every shooter at registration gets 300 small rifle primers. So you can shoot train up and shoot the match and you're not out of anything. Uh, well, not not in terms of primers, at least. Yeah, really. I like it. Yeah, so we're going to try that and see how it goes. Um, and then the in September, we're doing our uh, federal gold medal match again at Alabama Precision. It'll be our third annual uh, federal gold medal match with Jim Saunders and his crew. And that's always such a good time. I love shooting there. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they do such a fantastic job uh, setting that up. And I've been talking with Tom over at Armageddon Gear. He's he's helping us do something really cool on swag for this year. So it's going to be fantastic. Oh, That's man. Awesome. I still love the swag from last year. <laughs> That's probably one of your favorite hoodies, too. Yeah, I like the little shirt, too. I have, yeah. I wore that at Alabama. Yeah, the, the hoodies turned out good. You know, the... We did the um, the really cool chamber flags a couple of years ago, and I, I still see guys using those. Uh, and then the playbooks last year were a huge hit. And That's my favorite. I figure everybody in the world's got enough T-shirts and hats and stickers and crap to to last them the rest of their life. I I want I want to give guys something they're going to use on the range. You know, something mm -hmm. 
see that logo all the time. So, so uh, Jake Vibbert wants to know if Jason had one last cigar, what would it be? If I had one last cigar, what would it be? Man, JV asking the hard questions. Um, I, I think my favorite cigar of all time is a Partagas Limited Reserve 1997. Uh, and you really can't find them anymore. Obviously, they were the, the wrapper leaf was grown in 97, and I was lucky enough to find a box of them three years ago, and that's, that's the last I've seen. Um, Richie wants to know if you'll be selling primers at the New Mexico match, please. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we are working on that. The, the name of the game for us right now uh, is what's called allocation, where everything we make has to get allocated to, to certain areas. Uh, I'm working to try to get some product allocated for that. So if we can pull it off, we will definitely do so. Um, if not, we will have some primers on the prize table and at, uh, at registration, as I mentioned earlier. Awesome. Allocation, that's such a painful word. Mm -hmm. Wade Muller says he loves the playbook. Oh, it's awesome. It is. Such, such a cool idea. Hey, so I'm gonna do something different. I'm going to ask a question because I got a bunch of people that shoot a lot. Okay. So I would, and we'll, we'll see what the people in the, that are watching say, because I know there's someone that knows more about this than me watching. So I pulled a 50% off of a Kestrel cert off of the prize table in Alabama. And I know I want a 5700 Elite. No. But then there's this thing called a 5700 X Elite. And it says that it's faster. And, and that's about all it says. And they look the same. Does anybody that's watching, can anybody give me advice on which one to buy? <laughs> Or have, Jason, have you messed with that 5700X elite? I didn't know there was such an animal. Me neither. I bet our friend Ryan Hay could probably answer you that if you messaged him then. But. Yeah, no, I was going to message him today, and then work was actually really busy besides for that one point in time that I was buying 22 MO. But I was just seeing if anybody had any opinion on that. There might be some. Yep. So what, coming, what upcoming goals do you have for – federal and the shooting sports anything that you're looking to push for do or it, it's all about world domination i, I won't ever yeah. <laughs> <laughs> federal ammo um you know man we when we started out a uh, particular and i guess we have to kind of take it take it sport by sport it, when we started out with precision rifle um we were of the mindset that uh we could convince people to shoot factory ammo. Um, and I mean, we, we make some really, really, really good ammo. So, you know, Jen was talking about running it at Alabama this past, uh, this past match. You know, I, I'm routinely getting single digit SDs, you know, sub way sub half MOA accuracy. And I can't hand load well enough to, to compete with that. There's no point in me trying to do that. Um, but I, I think I think we finally got to the point where we understand that um, I, I think there's a certain stigma around factory ammo in precision rifle that you know if you're not if you're not hand loading you're not serious and if you don't have a NASA laboratory in your basement with nine billion dollars worth of reloading equipment you're not you're not really cool you know um, so we we have come to the point that we understand that you know hey we still make really good ammo you can go shoot it be competitive. I mean, Tucker Schmidt won a national level two-day match with it last year, uh, shooting the 107 Match King six Creed load. Uh, so it's it's certainly competitive, uh, but we understand that that's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. So I, I would love to see more people uh, embracing factory ammo as we go forward. You know, at, at the end of the day, man, I just I just want to see people using our products and being competitive. Um, on the pistol side, on three gun, you know, we. We try to we try really really hard to stay in front of the market and figure out exactly what's going on, what the what the new the new latest and greatest things are, and and how to innovate and move forward. And, and we got we got some stuff in the works that uh, that will hopefully help change the game. Well, that's a nice subtle hint there. Yeah. You feel uh, feel free to keep talking on that subject if you like. Uh, I will not. Thank you. <laughs> I was just offering, you know. <laughs> Are there any more lives? 
Um, Adam Green said Tucker is the man, which is very true. Tucker is the man. I love Tucker. Yep. Aaron Kincaid, Kincaid said that he won Pig River with factory ammo. It was, I was there for that, wasn't I? Yeah, that was a heck of a match. Josh Josh Bandy does such a fantastic job up there, and to have to have Tucker win at his place using using factory ammo was was really really cool. And and we had a really good turnout for that match. There were some studs shooting there, so it's not like he but he beat a bunch of scrubs like me. I mean, he was he was getting it done. Good. So Josh said factory ammo is awesome until you start shooting a BR. Any ideas on producing a six BR factory load? Oh Lord have mercy. Um oh and then Keith Baker also said make six BR and I'll never reload again. <laughs> yeah, so you know that's that's one of those things that uh that we have certainly talked about. We've talked about BR and GT and Dasher and so forth and so on. Um one one of the issues that we run into is that everything we do has to be Sammy spec. Um, and I know there's a lot of variations out there. Um, and then, I mean, frankly, guys, right now, we, we can't load everything we've got in the catalog now. Um, so it just at this particular point in time, I think it would be a little irresponsible to try to add anything else. But, uh, but we're, we're certainly listening and, and continuing to work and try to make it, make it right. So, Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with you on that. If you start making BR, then the, that's less primers for us to buy. Yeah, true story. But, you know, in, in, in the future, when we go to that that off four years, you know, maybe we could add a couple of them. Yeah, absolutely. Is that all the lives? Uh, Buddy Miller said second that, and Wade said agreed we need factory BR. So they're like, a couple people are interested in that. The masses have spoken. That's right. So we have to ask. Anything new and cool coming out soon that you can tell us about? Any sneak peeks? Um, we won't tell anybody. You're right. <laughs> just just me and you and our, our thousands of closest friends. Yes. Um, I, I don't have any idea on time frame, uh, but we are working on something that if we can pull it off, um, it would literally be a, a world changing product for precision rifle. So, that's so, all. so just make sure to let your friends over here at the shooter's mindset know when you come up with this world changing thing. Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, plan to launch it on a Tuesday evening. Right. And then as you guys launch it, you can be on here live and we can talk about how awesome it is. Absolutely. I'm on it. Or legit, if you have anything coming out, you want us to share it on the Shears Mindset page. If you just message me or Greg, one of us, and tell us, we'll be glad to share it. Sometimes I don't see stuff because there's so much on Facebook. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, actually, I, I, I guess I, I should have mentioned, uh, we did just release uh, six five Creedmoor with the 140 burgers. Uh, so that was a, a nice touch. Um, and then we're doing the six Creed with the 109 burgers. Yep, and that's that's one thing I guess we didn't mention in this is that y'all's match grade ammo is truly match grade ammo. Yeah, you know, so the the whole federal premium thing. So we're we're coming up on our hundredth anniversary next year, right? And when we launched federal premium, um, it it was it was really a deviation from the way the market worked. We we were the first ones to load anybody else's bullets in our ammo, you know. So we're we're picking the absolute best, most consistent components out there to load in our stuff. Um, and, and it's, it's amazing the amount of work and, uh, and professionalism that those guys at the plant put into that stuff. So they're doing some really cool products. Yeah. And, you know, I, uh, I've, I've shot it a couple of times. Um, I know two, two times was demoing Savage rifles. Yep. And they're like, Oh yeah, here's a 10 inch plate at a thousand yards. Here's some factory ammo. Here's a gun you could buy at, at Academy. Shoot it. I'm like, uh-huh. Jen, what was your wind call? I was about to say okay. I the wind call. <laughs> and then I hit it. I'm talking about the performance. And I, I never said I, and so that speaks more to the performance of federal premium ammunition. 
I can't shoot worse shit. But in between Jason's ammo and Jen's wind call and Savage's rifle, I was able to hit it. That's all you need. Um, Eric Lumberg wants to know what the price point is for the 6.5 with the 140 burgers. Uh, that is an excellent question. If you guys will give me just a second, I will tell you. Yeah, it's like eight know. seconds. I feel like it would have taken Eric less time to Google this than to ask you. Well, <laughs> just saying. Leon said that's why you can't find, it, find any 109s because you guys are using them all. Yeah, <laughs> we got the market cornered. Oh, that's fine. Now we know. Uh, let's see, guys. Give me one more second. Six, five, Creed. Done. One thirty. While he's looking, <laughs> Jen, how how tight was your rifle shooting with those? Uh, you were shooting the one hundred sevens, right? In the federal ammo. Mm-hmm. One hundred eight. Oh yeah, one hundred eight. Uh, uh, 107 Match Kings or 105 Burgers? Yeah, 107s. Yeah. 107s? Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was 108. Mm. Um, it was shooting like one whole group, so very well. Yeah, hard to beat. All right, so the, the pricing on the on the 140 Burgers, now you, you have to understand that this is straight – MSRP pricing, right? So this is catalog pricing. This is not street price. Uh, it's $45.99 a box. Uh, you could probably find it cheaper if you, if you, in, in normal, normal times. Yeah. You could also probably find it more expensive now. Derek wants to know if the 109s are available now. Uh, not currently. Let's see. So Mike Slack said the six crude 109s up his alley. Um, Keith Baker said six crude with 109s. That's legit. And Lumberg said thanks. Absolutely. So what's your next match, Jason, that you're going to be at? I know you're at Nationals now, but. Yep. So Nationals now. Uh, then I'm driving to New Mexico from North Carolina. So it's going to be a little bit of a road trip. I'm actually really excited. Oh, God. Uh, that's the only state I haven't been to, so that'll be my, my 50th state. And uh, we actually found a really cool place to stay that's going to let us shoot prairie dogs. So I'm going out a couple days early and breaking in my new barrel shooting prairie dogs, which is going to be fantastic. Uh, so be there, then I'll be at Pig River. And then uh, after that, I think it's the barrel maker in Wisconsin. And then we'll have to see from there. See what the travel schedule looks like. I'm very sad. I don't have. I do not have the money to fly to Wisconsin because that's one of my favorite matches with my favorite people up there. Because I have a lot of friends up there. So. Yeah, I've heard it's really awesome, and uh, you know, Ken Ken Wheeler's such a great guy, and I've heard he runs a fantastic match. So I'm I'm excited to get up there at some point. You have to say Ken and Missy. Oh well, I hadn't met Missy yet, so. Ken does an amazing job, and Missy does too, though. So. All right. Ken and Missy. Okay, Ken and Missy. Great job at it. No, they work really well as a team, and that is always a fun match and well done. So cool. you'll have a good time up there. If you've never been, that's a good time. Yeah, I'm excited about it. I mean, one year we had tornadoes, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, can't do much about that. I mean, you know, I've that... done match in a hurricane before, so. Isn't that the year everybody ended up just, like, sitting around and drinking bottles of wine at the vineyard all day instead of shooting? This you talking about the three gun? No, the the tornado. Um, we did shoot some, but it was a little rough the second day. Yeah, a little rough. There were tornadoes and things. Yeah, I think it was actually the first day that got because it wasn't this past year; it was the year before. They did a good job for what they were dealt with, but there literally were tornadoes that touched down, like in the town right there so they for safety of shooters had to pull everybody off the range and so it was like oh okay so we're at a winery so you know what are you gonna do yep but no it's a good time and and good people up there so you'll have a good time i'm glad you're getting kind of everywhere 
Um, I'm glad to hear you're at nationals too. Cause like when I posted a uh, post at Alabama and was like holding my federal primers, I was like, I got primers. Yay. I'm so, I'm the most, I'm the most happy girl or whatever. And somebody posted and was like, well, I really hope they're going to support the USPSA nationals like they are y'all. So I was so excited to hear that you're there. Yep. Wouldn't miss it. And so y'all are an equal opportunity company that are supporting across the board, not just one genre, which is really cool. Yep. You know, just, it's one of those things I always tell folks, you know, I, I really wish we could do more, you know, I wish, wish we could just get everybody squared away for the next year and it just, it's not in the cards. So. I know it's hard. It's the demand is outweighing the supply for sure right now. Yep, for sure. I know that's everywhere. Yep. What are the lives do you have, Greg? Let's see. Troy said he wouldn't trade that day for anything. I'm guessing talking about your uh, Wisconsin adventures. That was fun. And we had a great steak dinner. Oh, that was <laughs> See, Mar Matt Partain said it's an awesome match. He was in a Connex box with Brian Allen and Troy. Very memorable match. I remember that they were like we were stuck in the Connex box because the storm came up. I just remember we like shot a match and I was like the shooter on the match and like the wind just like came in and they're like time like my time was over and I picked my gun up and I just remember I think it was Troy <laughs> and like come on Jen get your stuff we gotta go we gotta go now and like we found a car to put all our stuff in but we wouldn't fit in it so like my gun and my pack are in somebody's car. I can't remember whose car it was. Anyway, in the back of their SUV. And then I'm like, they take off with our stuff and we like just start running towards the, the house where, or the whatever, the vineyard thing where everybody could go undercover in a building. And we start like running to get there. It was great. Troy said, there's lightning everywhere. Let's climb in this metal box. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect sense. <laughs> Why not? I mean, really, it makes sense. Oh. It was, it was just like it came up out of nowhere. Like it was fine and then it wasn't. So they kind of did like a hold the match for a bit and then they finally were like, we're gonna have to call this. There's tornadoes touching down. We we can't have y'all shoot in this. So I think they um I think it was like a match where the, the stages reset for the second day. So like it was 10 squads shooting the same stages. And then the next day, those 10 squads did 10 different stages. So because of that, I think they ended up scrapping the first day because everybody didn't get to shoot all the stages. And then the second day is what actually counted for score because, you know, which is what they had to do with the way the weather was. So they did a good job, so. Any other lives? Uh, none that I'm going to read. Oh my gosh. We're talking about what happened in the Connex box. I don't, I don't want to know what happened. And hey, with those three, there is no telling. <laughs> there is no telling. We're going to go to wrap up then. So Greg, go ahead and tell us any of your shout outs. Um, shout outs to GSL suppressors um, that aren't behind me right now. Um, to make my rifles more civilized, especially my 22, it's like silent. And classic jewelry and loan in Thompson, Georgia, for helping me figure out how to appease Uncle Sam and write those tax those tax things. Shooters and Sharpshooters of Augusta, our local indoor and outdoor ranges here. Uh, PDC Custom, the most beautiful rifle chassis known to man, available in lime green and normal human colors. Uh, Shooters World propellant, um, great powder, keeps my nice single digit SDs. Hunter's HD Gold, because I'm blind and I'm less blind with their fancy glasses on. And uh, Bortec to keep my rifle nice and squeaky clean sometimes when I remember to use their stuff before the match, not in between Saturday and Sunday after my rifle messed up. Awesome. All right, Jason, what shout outs do you have? So I'm gonna shout out to all of my team federal shooters uh, on the precision rifle side, Buck Holly, Tucker Schmidt, um, Mike Rogan, Shannon K. Let's see, who am I forgetting? Corey Klimovich out of Texas. Uh, super, super good guys. Love them all. They're 
just awesome uh, brand ambassadors. Um, so it's, it's a good crew. That's awesome. Good times, good times. And for me, shout outs, as I've said, I've pared it down this year. So shout out to Shooters of Augusta and Sharp Shooters of Augusta who are here locally and have always supported me. Um, 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 GSL Suppressors, HD Gold, Night Force Optics for Great Glass, uh, Impact Precision, um, Tight Tate makes amazing actions that are very smooth. So shout out to him. And, and that's about it for me. So if that is all, I think we will call this a wrap for episode 335. And we will be back next week with another guest. So we will see y'all next week. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. It was really good hanging out with you for a while. It was fun.